Democracy. Another video for the awesome members at for Beginners Editing Group. Uh, thank you very much for those who watched my previous video on how to remove the wrinkles from the background. Um, and thanks for those who left comments. A uh, special thank you to our ever awesome admin, Jan, who criticized my use of the pen tool. It's not a tool that gets used a lot. Uh, you don't see it very often in Photoshop tutorials. And I disagree wholeheartedly with Jan when he says that it doesn't have a lot of modern uses. That's an outdated tool. I have a feeling he might have been pulling my leg on that a little bit. Uh, but uh, Jan, as always, great to get your feedback. Look forward to what you might have to say about this video here. So I had a few people tell me that they wanted to see what I do for skin. So what I've got here is a picture uh, of my daughter. And I may as well just step back to the beginning and show you what I did. This is my straight out of the camera shot. Um, I wasn't fussy on the brown blanket. This was an impromptu shot. Uh, we were actually taking the Superman shot at this point. I said to my husband, pop her on that uh, bean bag over there and put her clothes back on. And I turned around and said, no, well, no, no, wait. Let me take a picture first. <laughs> so it wasn't even a planned shot. But I still like it and wanted to keep it. So what I'm going to do is uh, just darken that background a little bit. Um, I'm also going to probably pull my highlights down a little. Flash was a strong on it there. So I'll pull those highlights down and the whites, just leave it like that. And uh, what I've done is uh, this here tool is a radial tool, a radial filter. And what it does is it lets you pick a setting and apply it to either the inside or the outside of a circle that you draw. And you just click and drag. So I click and drag just past my subject. And as you can see, my setting was to bring the exposure down. And I can play with the setting after the fact. It uh, basically it's like a vignette, and when you use it with only the exposure, yes, it's basically just vignetting the picture for me. Um, but where if I go to the vignette in Lightroom, it's going to apply it dead center. Sometimes your model's not in the center or your subject, uh, and this will allow you to place it anywhere. But it also allows you to click invert and apply settings to just the middle of the circle. And on like a vignette, it's not just exposure. I can uh, blur the background uh, by pulling down the clarity. I can pull down the sharpness. You can't really tell it in this image, but in other pictures, you, do, you can see a difference. Uh, then I'm going to click Done, because I'm done there. So yeah, a lot of people were asking what I do about skin and making it even. Uh, there's a few things that I do for skin, really. Um, I usually go in and put the yellows under the orange just a touch. So, especially with babies, if there's any yellow tones, I get rid of those. Uh, and then I go down to luminance. And you can see she's got some splotchy red bits on her cheeks. It's not your typical angelic baby glowing cheeks at all. It's a teething rash. It's not very attractive. I don't really want it in her picture as a mom. Uh, so I want to get rid of that. Uh, but even aside from that, with babies, we, we like to see them with perfect skin. Uh, so for luminance in portraits, for grown-ups, I would add around 25. To, and that just kind of gives their skin a little bit of a boost. But for babies, uh, usually take it up to 50. Or uh, right now it's 57 it's set at. That's fine. You know, we like to see babies with flawless skin. Adults, we expect to see texture. We don't expect flawless skin on that, and when we see it, we automatically think Photoshop. So I try not to go overboard on grown-ups, but for babies, that's where I go. So that is the extent of what I would do with this in Lightroom at this point. I'm not happy with the fact that I'm still left with this blotchiness. So for that, Photoshop. And to save time, I already loaded it in there for us. <coughs> so the image here, you can see that. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can treat skin in Photoshop. Um, I tend to be kind of lazy, and uh, I always go for selective color first. Jan might say it's another outdated tool that doesn't get used a lot, and I will admit that in all of the tutorials I watched, you don't see people pop it open very often, but it's... So, if I were to just go into Image, Adjustment, Selective Color, 
it defaults to the red channel, so that's handy. If I just take out the blacks, you'll see that right away that evened out her cheeks an awful lot. Like, it's considerably better. But it also dulled down her lips. It took red out of the rest of the image as well. And that's not always going to be what you're going to want to do. So I'll just cancel that. So we can actually use just a quick mask tool here. So by clicking on your brush, clicking on this little icon here that is a rectangle with a circle inside, it actually turns your brush into a fancy mask making tool. And it does have the effect that you're going to be painting red on your picture. Don't panic, that goes away. And I'm just going to paint where the red is that I want to even out and click it again. So what that does is it masked off these areas, meaning any edits I do won't affect those two areas. So to change that, I'll go up to Select and Inverse. Now you didn't see anything happen on the screen, but it did invert the selection. So now the edits I do are only going to happen in those two selections. So now I'll go to Image, Adjustments, and Selective Color, and I will take the black out of the red, just like that. And I'm happy there. See before and after. And I'll click OK. And the reason you always use a soft brush when you do this is that as you're adjusting colors, you don't want to leave a hard line around the edges that'll be noticeable. Soft brush all the time. Uh, so now I've done that, and I think that looks pretty good. And you can see it didn't take the red out of her lips. It didn't take the red out of anything else in the image. Just there where I left it. So I will hit Control D to deselect, and as you can see, the cheeks are a lot smoother now. There's a little red, a little dark shadow over here that used to be much redder, and I'm just going to take my clone tool. Opacity is really low, anywhere it's between 13 and 20 percent for things like this. I'm just pick an area, and I'm just gonna just sort of blend around the edges there and then work it out. Let's see, it just made it a lot less noticeable. And then just go up into the shadow and just bring that shadowy part down a little. And the only other thing I would do on this little girl for this image is to handle that vein that's up on her nose. Shows up in every picture she's in and for the most part, I don't mind it, but I will use this as an opportunity to show you how I would really quickly get rid of it. And that's everything else. Clone tool, 20%. So I'm just going to pick below it. So I'm clicking to select the source, and I'm just going to give it a few clicks. And just kind of build up the cover in gradual steps so that it's not as noticeable. And I'll just extend it up a little more there. And if you ever have a highlighted area that you kind of want to minimize, like where the light is hitting, you can just do the same thing. When you're cloning at 10%, it's really hard to ruin it. This tends to just give you a soft, soft edit. And just play around until it looks nice and even. All right, so now I have half a minute left, and uh, somebody else did ask me what you would do for under eye dark circles. Guess what the answer is? A clone tool at 10%. So with my last minute, uh, I'm just going to select right below the eye, and I'm just going to paint this in just a couple of strokes. You, The temptation is to completely eliminate under eye circles, and you just can't, because when they're not there, the face is going to look really flat and really horrible. So a couple of strokes to minimize it, and that's it. Leave something. So now there is the finished image, and if you see the Lightroom version again, you can see the under eye circles and the splotchiness, as opposed to the Photoshop version, where the skin is much smoother and the under eye circles are a lot less noticeable. Okay, so that's my video for tonight. I am going to go tuck myself into bed. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. Uh, if you have an idea for what you'd like my next video to be about, I'd like to hear that too. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.